Today I'm going to be showing you the module PF2E Visioner. This module allows you to automate stealth as well as cover. Let me show you how it works. This module is feature complete, but there will still be improvements being made by the time you watch this video. So if you're watching this a few months from now, they might just have a lot more stuff than I'm about to show you right here. If you have any questions about this module, you're welcome to jump into the PF2E server linked below and jump into the PF2E Visioner thread to ask the developer himself any questions. Remember to like and subscribe if you like this sort of content. I'm going to show you how this module works right now. Starting off with the module enabled, I recommend you go to configure settings, PF2 vision or settings, and then when you open, you'll get a bunch of tabs here. We're going to skip auto cover for now. We'll talk about this later. Go to general, make sure default and counter filter state is enabled. Let's go ahead and select ignore allies enabled as well. Uh, I don't really care about loot actors, but you can select this if you wish. I recommend you use the token HUD button, so then enable that. We're going to integrate the role outcome into the token manager and enforcing raw as well as sneak raw enforcement is up to you. You can read this carefully and see what this entails, but I'm not going to touch that for now. We're going to save the settings. I also recommend you go to seek and range. Now, if you like the old pre remaster seek template 30 foot burst, you can select this. I do like it, so I'm going to select that, but that's up to you. You can also decide to limit the seek range in combat and out of combat by selecting these tabs and deciding what range. I'm going to do this. Visibility and hover. I do re recommend you enable hover tooltips, and I do like my players seeing uh, the targets as well. Yes. So I'll enable both of those and we're just going to save these as well. Here's the quick and dirty on how this module works. I'm going to show you how you use it in combat and how it can make your life just that slightly bit easier with a bit of a learning curve. I currently have this encounter set up with Mauricio's turn being right about now. So what I'm going to quickly do is have Mauricio hide using my token HUD, which is another video you can watch on the top right here. Let's go ahead and hide here and I'm going to give her a plus 20 circumstance bonus. That way she succeeds on hiding and she will succeed currently. If you click on the rat, the rat sees her. But if you click on open hide results and apply all, this little menu that's showing up, by the way, shows the visibility change versus all the tokens on the board. And currently Marissa is hidden to all of them. And if you don't want to open the little menu, you can always click on apply changes to quickly apply the changes without having to open the menu. She is now considered hidden to the rat. Now Marissa as a second action is going to stealth next to the rat. So we're going to go ahead and sneak critical success. You can open the sync results and apply that to all. And yes, Marissa is now considered undetected. So as part of that second action, we're going to go ahead and sneak up there and move right next to the rat. Now she has a third action, which we'll use to strike at the rat immediately. With the rapier, also notice how the rat is off guard to this attack. That is indeed a critical hit on the rat. The rat is eviscerated, but the damage consequences is she will now be visible again as her attacking has made it so that she's visible to all enemies now. So at this point in time, the rat will see Mauricio. I guess the other rat will see Mauricio because this rat is absolutely dead. This does seem awfully complicated for something that you could just manually toggle, but let me show you why this is better than just the normal base foundry. I've now added a dragon to the board. Now Mauricio is going to attempt to hide again. And when we have opened the hide results, it looks like she's successfully hidden from the giant rat, but not hidden from the dragon. We just apply all this. And remember, you can always just click on apply changes without opening the dialogue to do it automatically. Mauricio can now no longer be seen by the rat. So if it is the dragon's turn, though, the dragon can easily run in and strike at her. Let's kill Mauricio. There we go. Uh, if we go all the way down to the rat, the rat can no longer see Mauricio. She is considered hidden and will have to do the flat check, which can be automated with PF2 utility buttons, by the way. Once you get the hand of this module, it'll be amazingly simple to use. And honestly, it's worth it because stealth rules in PF2E are pretty flippin' complicated. The coolest part about this, so it has a little bit of a visibility manager here. This visibility manager allows you to sort of see how the giant rat sees other tokens or how the other tokens see the giant rat. Let's say the rat is undetected to Ezrin and Valeros, but only hidden to Mauricio. Let's go ahead and apply this. If I select Mauricio, the rat is hidden. If I select Valeros, I just simply don't see the rat. So Mauricio can quickly target the rat 
and use the action point out. I'm gonna go to the HUD, click on target the rat, click on point out, and look at that. As she has pointed out the rat, the arrows can now see the rat. Amazing. This also works with the seek action. For example, Kyra can quickly go to skills and seek, roll a seek check. SA21 should be a success. So we can set up the seek template here, replace the burst, and look at that. It's gonna go ahead and reveal the rat. I can see the rat on the board here. And that's the long and short of how you can automate stealth in Pathfinder 2E. Pretty cool, huh? But we're not done because the auto cover part of this module is amazing. We're gonna go back to settings to PF2 Visioner and go to the cover manager, which is on the back here. We're gonna go ahead and apply the auto cover. We're just gonna enable it. And uh, I recommend 10%. This is a bit complicated to explain, but basically a little bit of the ray going through a token will make cover happen. We're gonna ignore undetected tokens that they won't count for auto cover. We're gonna ignore for dead tokens. Uh, allies usually do count for auto cover in my games. The allies give lesser cover, so I'll, I'll keep that. And the rest, prone tokens. I don't like granting cover, so I'm gonna unselect that. And we're gonna go ahead and save this. And now, let's say Mauricial is moved here. Uh, Mauricial is gonna target the dragon. Now you will see the dragon's AC is 22 at the bottom. That is the dragon's AC, it is elite. When Marishal attacks the dragon with a bow, you use a hand crossbow, and you can see the AC has increased from 22 to 23, which is pretty cool. In addition, walls also provide a sort of cover. So if I put her partway behind a wall and do the attack again, you can see that the AC is 24 for standard cover. That's the basics of this module. Play around with it and see how it goes. Wait. Did we just get an update? Royal Leaf, the author of this module, is constantly working on this module, which means that some of the stuff I've already shown you might be a little outdated by the time you watch this, but let me show you what the newest release added as of today. The first thing that's changed is that damage consequences is now called attack consequences. Because after all, when you attack, that's when you lose the hidden, right? Not when you roll damage, so that's a good update. The next thing is also really cool. It's a cover visualization. What you quickly need to do here is go to configure controls and go to PF2 Visioner. I made a key bind for color visualization. The default is shift, but for me it's X. Either one works. Now, if you select Valeros and hover over the rat and press your key bind, I'm gonna have to jiggle it a little bit here. You will see cover visualization on everything. That means that yellow on Valerus means that the rat has lesser cover and green means that there's no cover. If it's red, it means there's standard cover. So just keep that in mind. The module also has a really cool work in progress method of detecting hidden walls. Yes, you can now display hidden walls to your players using the seek action. Although I'm not gonna show it off yet because it's still a slight work in progress, but Roy Leaf has been amazing. He's been working on this nonstop, making this module as perfect as it can be. I hope you liked this video. Let me know what you thought of the module in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe if you like this sort of content and watch this video right here. I'm sure you'll find it useful. Thank you.